Greetings hobbies, this is Artisans of Vool. Let's have a look at what's coming in Blender 4.2. So the Blender 4.2 beta has been released. If you want to try it out, just go to the Blender Foundation, go to download, and if you scroll to the bottom, you get this download Blender Experimental. They've actually got the 4.3 alpha out, but I'm gonna be honest, I generally stay away from the alphas because they're a bit more buggy than I'd like. Whereas the beta generally might have a few bugs to it, but normally is working fine. And you can see this was released on the 9th of June. Just click download, then you're gonna get a zip folder that you need to extract. And when you open it, you'll have this set of files. Just double click on Blender and it will open up Blender 4.2. At that point, you'll have an option box and you can just click to keep your previous presets. I've already done that, so we've got those already ready to go. So let's have a look at some of these changes. I'm gonna focus on the ones that I'm most interested in. Check out a really nice change that I'm really excited about. Have a look at some other changes and talk through them. Some of them have a couple of minor problems and we'll have a look at how to navigate those issues and what Blender's done to try and make that so it's not too much of a problem. And then I'll have a quick talk about something that I think is missing, which would be really nice to see for something that was introduced in Blender 4.1, but they just haven't quite got it where it needs to be yet. And hopefully it will come in the future. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is something we can do with our modifiers. So I'm just gonna bring in a cube, let's scale that on everything but the Z axis, and then we'll just go in and, I don't know, let's control and B that on the edge. And then what we're gonna do is bring in a cube, so shift A mesh and then cube, and then let's scale that on the Z axis, and then just, I don't know, bring that over here. And then I'm just gonna come in here and use a Boolean, and then H that out and we've got that there. So I'm doing this the long way, so I'm not using any add-ons, but we'll talk about also why I'm not using any add-ons in a second. So we've got this here, and now let's say we want to add in a mirror modifier. So I'm gonna put in my mirror modifier, and I need to bisect it on the X. Great, and Blender works out by itself that we probably want the mirror modifier last, because we work from the top down, so it booleans and then does the mirror. And if we don't, we can always drag it around, so we can change that. Now, let's say I want this to look more like an inset. So what I'm gonna do is Shift and D to duplicate this object, and then I'm just gonna get rid of both of those for the duplicate and just scale it down and scale it more on the Z axis. So we've got something like this. And then I'm going to Boolean that to this object. So let's add a modifier, Boolean. Click that we want to add this object and we want it to be a union. And then we can hide that original object. Great, so we've got this going on, but this isn't in the right order, first of all. I want the mirror to be last. And also, if I, let's say, bring in a new cube, so I'm just gonna bring in a new cube here, let's scale that on the z-axis, and Boolean that out as well, you'll notice this has come after all of the other modifiers, which is not what we want. Now, we can, again, start dragging everything around, but that gets really tedious. What instead we can do is now come to our mirror modifier and click pin to last. And now, that will happen last and we also want to have our inset part being last that is our boolean here so i can then drop down and pin that to last as well and now anything i do let's just bring in another cube and boolean that as well we'll notice that these stay at the bottom which is great really like that i think it's a really cool function now I will say one thing i'd quite like is as well as an option to try and do this so we can pin to last be really great if there was a pin to first function as well. I mean, if you're thinking about this and you want a pin to last, you must recognize that you also want a pin to first so that it is the first action that's being done, not always the last. Don't know why they haven't put that in there. So a really good change. I just wish they'd take it a little bit further. Also, though I think this would be a really tricky thing to do, there are some things that we want to put together to happen last and some things we want to put together to happen first. If you're gonna start instigating something like this, why just have pinning? Why not have something where you can put your modifiers almost into collections so that I can drag several modifiers up or several modifiers down at the same time? That would be a really cool change. I think this is a really good step in the right direction, but I really wish there was a pin to first or some way of grouping these together so I can move them around more easily though maybe that would just bring in too many submenus. I don't know. You tell me what you think in the comments section. Do you think that this would be something useful? Now let's move on to the next change, which I guess will probably be good. I haven't really got too much of an opinion on it at this point because I haven't played around with it enough, but there are some things that I think it's really important you know about it so you can get Blender back to the way you liked it as quickly as possible. 
And that's to do with what I was doing over here in a way. Normally I'd just be using ball tools or hard ops to do this. And those are add-ons, some of which come with Blender and some of which don't. But we now deal with add-ons in a different way, slightly. So let's go to edit and preferences. And you can see now we don't have an add-ons option. We have instead extensions. Now extensions are broken up into two types. We've got add-ons and we've got themes. So we've got a lot of different options here. Now the first thing is that all of these don't seem to be actually installed with Blender. Previously they were there but not activated. Here they don't seem to be there at all. I'm guessing this is something to try and keep down file sizes and make everything a little bit more smaller and maybe a little bit faster. Instead, any add-on that we want, let's say Loop Tools, we have to install, but I can't install it straight away. It says disabled. I need online access. And this is where we've got this here. Now you can click this allow online access, but I think it will only allow it once. What you actually want to do is go to systems and click where it says network allow online access. Then we can go back to our extensions. That's gone and you'll notice it will keep searching. It came up at the top and is now gone for any updates to our add-ons. Now, if you've got any that you've already installed that are external add-ons, for example, from Blender Market, those will still be there. You'll notice I've got them here. It just says legacy. I'm going to turn back on hard ops. Now I turn that off because this seems to mess up some of the options here with this pinning, but I'm recording this on the 9th of June. So literally they haven't really had the chance to start fiddling around with this and there's not been an update to hard ops. So I'm sure that will come. So you do have all your previously installed add-ons, but what you are missing is, let's just come back up here. I previously had loop tools activated and 3D print toolbox and both of those are missing along with all my other native add-ons that Blender normally comes with. Now, even though I click to import my preferences from Blender 4.1, those are missing. So it looks like we're gonna have to go through and click install for all of those add-ons. Now, all we have to do is click install and it gets installed. So that's not the worst thing in the world. It just seems like it could be a bit tedious. Now, actually they have thought about this, so it's not as bad as all that. If you see at the top, it's got missing built-in add-ons. And if I click that, this has all the previous add-ons that I used that were part of Blender. And to make it really easy to set this up when you come into Blender 4.2 for the first time, I can just click install in every single one of these. And some will take longer to install than others. Also, you've got, I think, some old ones that aren't really relevant anymore. So at least they've thought about this and it's not actually too difficult to fiddle around with. I'll also mention that this add-on called ND seems to be shipping with Blender 4.2, and that is awesome. I'm gonna do a video on ND because this is a really, really cool add-on, and the fact that this ships with Blender is awesome. I think a lot of people are gonna be very, very happy about this add-on. As I said, a video is coming to highlight this and exactly what this does. So honestly, feel really excited about this. And if you wanna make sure you know when that video is coming, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. So a bit of a change here, something we need to know about. Also, if you go to themes, and let's say we want to have a theme, I don't know, let's say this one, you can install it as well. Or if you want to actually look what it looks like, click on the drop down box and you can then click on your extensions and it will bring you to what this theme looks like so you can have a look at it. You can also from here, so you could literally just spend your time looking at this, you could come down and click get theme and then you can just drag and drop it into Blender and then set as your current theme or not set as your current theme, just import it. And then when you go to your edit and preferences in your themes or up here, you've now got all of those options. So I use Blender Dark with my own changes, but you've got that there and one other one that I installed as a test earlier. So that's really cool. I think this extension thing is generally going to be a really big positive. It should, I imagine, make Blender a little bit less large as a file to download and to sit on your computer hard drive. So overall good changes, just some things to be aware of that we need to know to get everything going. One last thing is if you do want to install a Blender add-on from Blender Marketplace and you've downloaded it, this is on this tiny little arrow here, which I don't know why it's there. You just click that and install from disk. So that's still there, nothing to worry about. The last thing I wanted to mention is something that I still think is missing. I'm just gonna get rid of all of these to demonstrate that and come to our geometry nodes and click new. And that is that we're still missing a function that I think would be really good to have. If I just shift an A and type in a Boolean, and we'll bring in a mesh Boolean, I can demonstrate this. So we've got that there, let's just drag cube 
3 and we'll just put that into the mesh 2 relative and we've got this cutout. Now what we've got from Blender 4.1 is something called the bake node. Let's just bring that in. And what this allows us to do is click bake and that saves all of these functions that have gone before it. So for example, if I bring my cube back and then just move that around, if I move this around, you'll notice the Boolean stays there. And this means that Blender isn't having any difficulties computing all of the movements that I'm making because it's not trying to constantly do the Boolean. And then all I can do is just get rid of that bake and then H to hide it. And we've still got that going on and then we can rebake it if we want to. So it just speeds everything up. My only issue with this, and the thing that I really wish we could change, is that normally we can actually add in choices here. So for example, if I do my group input and put cube three there, so if I come here, I could change this to another cube. Let's go for cube six. And then, oh, because I've got bake, I need to click bake, and it's gonna change it to cube six, which is really cool. Means that I don't normally need to go into my geometry nodes, but now because of that bake node, I do. It would be great if there was a way of taking this out, this button, so that we could put it in our geometry node modifier. And it's just a shame that we don't have a node coming off of this to be able to put it in a group input. So I really hope that Blender at some point sorts that out so that we can access these bake functions from the geometry node modifier itself. Now those aren't all the changes that are happening to Blender 4.2. There's quite a few in animations and other areas, but that's just not something that I really cover on the channel because this is more for 3D printing design. But what do you think of these changes? Are you happy with them? Is there anything else that you think Blender is currently missing that you'd really like to see? Let me know in the comments section or let me know in the comments section if you've already tried out the ND add-on and what you think of that. Have a great day, guys.